Hey guys, just showing you my new, new fuel tank on the Scout 2 here. Uh, I'm doing a complete new fuel system all the way from the front. I uh, ripped out all the fuel lines. Um, I ripped out the tank obviously, the filler neck. And the reason I'm making this video is to show you guys uh, a possible solution for gas fumes in the garage. Um, when I first brought this truck home about three weeks ago, maybe going on four weeks now. I couldn't park it in the garage for more than an hour or two. Uh, I was worried about someone lighting a match or being an open flame, some source nearby and the whole house going up. I mean, this thing really reeked of gas. It was basically, uh, it was not a tight fuel system. Uh, it wasn't not airtight. And I'm gonna show you guys why. Um, first, we'll walk out to the maintenance yard here. And I'll show you the tank. So obviously uh, drop the tank here. Um, this is the stock tank, it's about 45 years old. My Scout's in 1973. And <clears throat> you can see the seam weld here is starting to split. So I pretty much um, of the opinion that the uh, tank was not airtight to begin with. Um, these fittings can crack right here over time. Um, crack up the welds um, I mean who knows where where the gas was separating from some guys try to salvage these tanks uh, I just decided to go with the plastic replacement on these which I'll show you <clears throat> again they're pretty cheap they're about 200 bucks um, and they have all the fittings that you need <clears throat> um, this one right here, you got a vent, um, a few vents, you've got your drain, this is your your drain return from your uh, vapor canister, right, so any fuel that condenses in the vapor canister, um, I call it the vapor canister, it's just the vapor liquid separator, this is the repair job I did on it, one of the nipples broke off, so I just got a fitting from the hardware store, Heated that up with a heat gun and super glued it together. See how that works out. But basically, the <clears throat> your your vaporized fuel, right, should condense in here, drain down back into the tank instead of just venting to the atmosphere. Um, and then these two are vents as well. And this is your air displacement hose line. So when you're filling up gas to the filler neck here it has to displace the air inside of your gas tank okay so that comes out here so that we can get a full tank uh, put a new sending unit in it <clears throat> this is fairly easy to replace it's not uh, anything difficult basically you just have this lock ring right here this kind of uh, brass colored lock ring it's metal and then you have these tabs, which are held in by a few screws. This is a pretty interesting setup, I guess you could say. I've never seen anything like this. It looks really cheap how this company designed it. Uh, but it is made in the USA. So all you do is you pull these tabs off and uh, drop your sender unit down in here. And put the put an O-ring on. There's a thick O-ring that came with the tank. Um, and then Put that lock ring on, secure it down, and you're good to go. Uh, mine fit in this 90 degree position, so that's where the fuel's coming out of. And then you have your, your ground wire and your gauge and everything there, your gauge wire. So uh, cool, I'll show you guys how, um, or basically the main culprit, I think, for the, the fumes in the garage. Um, First was that tank, right? But then if you look at the filler neck here, you can see this has been repaired. If you want to even call it a repair, it looks like chewing gum or something that the previous owner had some mechanic do. This is absolutely absurd in my opinion. You can see that this thing's been splitting over the years. And right there, I mean, you can see daylight through this thing. So, obviously, uh, this was not an airtight system. All the fuel is venting through this crack in the filler neck. So 
So guys, on your old scouts, if uh, if your scout smells like gas when it's been sitting for a while, or like mine for an hour or two in a, in an enclosed space, uh, yeah, all your all your gas is evaporating, especially on a hot day. That gas is just aerating and, and evaporating out of your tank. So if you wonder why you're getting crappy gas mileage or things just smell bad, there you go. Check the filler neck. Um, also check check your tank. See if the, the fittings on the tank are secure. Check for cracks in your tank. And then also check back here in this kick panel. Give you a better shot of it right here. Uh, this is the access door for that liquid vapor se vapor separator and you got a bunch of hoses I ran all new hoses up to the front up to the charcoal canister and I'm running all new hoses to the tank itself This is the line that goes to the charcoal canister all the way at the front of the vehicle uh, This line's really cheap. I just got off McMaster uh, It's a nylon line that's rated for fuel. I bought like 50 feet of it and um, I had a little bit left over but uh that that seemed to be the good amount and then um this is my new filler vent line right here and there's a new filler in there okay these two bolts on the outside guys these go to the filler neck that bolts the filler neck in place and then if you're curious like i was how to actually reinstall this this vapor separator i'll show you okay these bolts here these are nine inches apart. At first I thought, oh, I'll, I'll mount this, this um, liquid vapor separator right here. But these eyelets are 14 or 15 inches apart. So obviously that's not gonna work. Um, now I pulled this out, actually my buddy pulled this out and you know, we might've been having a few beers or something when we did this, cause it was a, it was a big job to cut all these lines. There's one, two, three, four, five, six lines that uh, attach underneath this rear driver side quarter panel so it was a big job to get this tank out and uh, you know we were pulling all this stuff apart not really paying really close attention uh, we should have taken some photos but we didn't anyways we looked on youtube couldn't find a solution for how this darn thing mounts so the orientation is like so okay and what we found is um after digging around a little bit is there's a stud right behind here it's seam welded onto this uh, inner quarter panel okay and i can't show you on video but there's a there's a threaded stud right behind here and there's one down below on the bottom here so this mounts just like so <clears throat> if i can get this in here okay so that's going to mount there's a hole right here you can see that's connected you guys can see this you know, it's hard to tell but anyways there's a stud right here there's one down lower in the vehicle so that's how that mounts so I'm just gonna run all these hoses again got to cut it to length and uh, throw away this old filler neck definitely this thing is toast I got a new one from uh, uh, I think it was ihscout.com uh, they've helped me find a few really hard to find parts you know they don't make these anymore we were thinking about fabricating our own but we didn't have a vendor for for uh doing a steel version for this wall of tubing anyways guys that's uh i hope the video has helped you out a little bit um and uh if you have any questions please post them in the comments below if you've done this before your experience is definitely uh, going to be a help to anyone else doing this project but these old scouts uh, I, you know, I just feel a lot better replacing the whole fuel system, um, tank, lines, repairing any cracks, just doing it all at one time, fuel pump. So this Scout's going to have a whole new system from the fuel pump back. And I'm also going to wire in an electric fuel pump, so I'll do a video showing you guys how I do that. Um, my uncle's got a 79 Scout, again this is a 73. And he had uh, starting problems with his until he put an electric fuel pump actually in line in front of the mechanical fuel or after the mechanical fuel pump. And what he does is he primes it for a few seconds to fire it up so that there's fuel in that float bowl because I think his has been evaporating. Um, he said 
uh, that solved his starting problem. So we'll see how this thing fires up once I get a new fuel system in it. And um, I'm planning on installing that electrical pump, so I'll do a video on that. Uh, but I am going to keep the mechanical pump. The electrical is just going to be auxiliary. All right, guys. Take care, and thanks for watching.